I want to begin with our longtime It's Your Call legal analyst, defense attorney Jeffrey Evan Gold, who is also a former assistant prosecutor. Jeff, great to have you with us. Thanks, Lynn. There are a lot of viewers who are wondering why this case is even going to trial since police didn't arrest George Zimmerman for over a month after the incident. When did it evolve into a murder case? Well, it got some national attention uh, on uh, some networks that pushed it, and then he did get charged. There are really two facts in the case that are opposing. One, everyone knows that he was told not to follow Trayvon Martin and then went ahead and did. On the other hand, the autopsy shows that at the time that the gun was shot, Trayvon Martin was on top of George uh, Zimmerman. So there are some facts on both sides of it. Whether George Zimmerman can get a fair trial when everyone seems to be coming in with uh, their mindset about whether this is a racial case, a political case. After all, the president of the United States weighed in on this local case to say he could have been his son. So there's all kinds of uh, drama going on in uh, Florida today. We're going to talk about all of those things, but first I do want to understand why the prosecution is seeking a guilty verdict for a second degree murder but not premeditated murder if if you knew that he was there if you knew he was in the presence of this so-called victim why not charge him with first degree murder well i think they recognize he didn't go into this struggle with the idea that he would kill him and he probably didn't know more than this was a heat of passion circumstance. So second degree recognizes the fact that there was a struggle, that perhaps it was uh, motivated by some provocation. Uh, heat of passion is generally considered an, in, an imperfect self-defense. So it's more than self-defense, enough to convict you, but it's not that you premeditated it, not that you thought about it ahead of time. Okay, originally we heard a lot about the so-called stand your ground. Right. Um, defense and legislation, which is in effect in Florida and many other states across the nation. So why is George Zimmerman's defense attorney moving away from it and perhaps explain what it is for us? Well, first of all, the overall concept that at least 21 states have adopted now uh, is you don't have to retreat. Let's say it in simple terms. The stand your ground was a procedure that in Florida that allowed you to do this pretrial, that allowed you to come forward pretrial, have a hearing, and the judge could, in essence, dismiss the charges. You couldn't be sued. Case over. Mm -hmm. His attorneys decided they didn't want to have this hearing twice. It may have been for money reasons. They didn't want to put the experts up twice. Or for tactical reasons. They didn't want their witnesses exposed to cross-examination and then have that testimony be used later at a trial. The attorney wanted to to have it all in one at trial. The judge denied it and said either it's stand your ground or self-defense. Okay. But the key is there's still no duty to retreat. Okay. What do we, we? This is just an example of uh, how divisive this case is. But a lot of people saying he may have made the wrong. He definitely made the wrong decision getting out of that car. Look, it's super divisive. We have people making opinions right now, and I'm trying to withhold my opinion. Although I had the same knee-jerk reaction when you first heard it that it was all one way. What we don't, we do know two things. One. George Zimmerman really didn't stand his ground because he moved from his ground. And the other thing we don't know is whether Trayvon Martin simply attacked him. We just don't know that if he started to pummel him or whatever else. We don't know that. So that's why there's a trial, and that's why everybody ought to just hold their breath, let the evidence well, I think it's But I'm worried about what's going to happen because of all the racial implications of this if uh, George Zimmerman was acquitted. And looking at the case beforehand, how long do you anticipate that it might take? I don't know. They had a, a list of 300 witnesses. I doubt they're going to call 300 witnesses, so we just don't know. Uh, the, today was a motion that could delay the trial, so we don't even know. They're, they're still talking about the tape and, and discovery violations, so it could even be delayed. I don't think that's going to be the case. It's ready for trial. But, but also Do you think that people will be open-minded if the evidence comes out that perhaps Trayvon attacked him first. Maybe he shouldn't have been following him, but are we going to be open to the idea that it wasn't calculated murder? That's what jury selection is about, and that's what the first part of the case is, can they find a jury that can say they will be impartial? If they say they never heard about the case, I'm worried about them, right? <laughs> right. You know, I never heard of OJ. What? Yeah. Well, but if they say they can be fair and impartial, let's give them a shot.